Hi, Virtual Choir. I am Dr. Rena Gupta. I'm a laryngologist and I practice out of Beverly Hills, California. I just opened my own practice, the Center for Vocal Health, a few weeks ago. Yes, during all of this. Um, and I am so honored to have been asked to be part of this really incredible project here. Um, I'm going to do my best to just pass on a few pearls of wisdom about how you can take care of your voice, kind of a little bit about how it works, some of the things that might be affecting it, and how you can self-treat a little bit at home, um, which is where we all find ourselves right now. So one of the things I thought would be helpful is just to talk a little bit about how the voice works. I think probably this is a very trained group of singers. You all know this, but the bulk of the power of your voice obviously comes from your breath. So you're not going to want to feel any of that tension and tightness that sometimes we do feel at the end of a long voice you stay. That tells us that we've overcome either the capacity of our lungs to do the work that we're asking of them, or more likely we've fatigued and we've sort of lost connection with that breath support and we've gotten a little lazy, if you will, and we're kind of holding on over here. So one of the things I would ask you right out of the gate is to pay attention to that feeling of achiness and fatigue here, especially as you're using your voice. And when you do feel that, ask yourself to check back in with that breath and see if that helps to offload that pressured feeling over here. If not, there are some ways that we're gonna talk about in a little bit to handle that. But again, the reason that we really focus on that is that this is why or how voice use becomes more effortless, is when you are plugged in to your breath support, when you aren't, you will start to feel that in your throat because your brain is still being commanding the situation, right? It is saying, hey, look, you're telling me to sing, and you're not giving me the power I need here just for whatever reason you've disengaged. So I'm still going to sing, but I'm going to use something else. And so it kind of holds on here, right? So this is where sometimes you can get entrapped with some suboptimal muscle memory. And so again, singing is often just about listening to your body's cues and telling yourself to not ignore them, but rather, how do I address them? Why do I think this is happening? Sometimes right out of the gate as you're singing, you're going to feel that over here. And that's not so uncommon, especially right now, because as we are feeling more stress and more anxiety, what we're doing is we're actually starting out our days really tight over here, especially vocal artists really tighten up over here. And so we actually have already kind of cued our brain to start working here. And so we don't really focus on that starting healthfully point, right? Because you're not feeling that badly, but then you'll find that you'll fatigue really quickly. So whatever your tool is to take away your attention from here and plug back into that breath support, I would really encourage you these days in particular to invest in a few moments to do that. Everybody handles it really differently. Some people have breathing exercises. Some people do meditation. Some people do um, cardio. You know, they'll do a bunch of jumping jacks or something just to tell your brain, hey, that's where I want you to be doing the work right now. So the first tip right out of the gate is really think about your lungs and your breathing as your singing organ, and this will follow. Now, Fast forwarding, obviously, it's not like the voice, the vocal cords don't play a role at all, but what they're really going to be doing is positioning themselves so that as the air from your lung passes over them, they will be able to vibrate at the pitch you are asking them to do, right? So by the length and the tension of the vocal cords, you will get a vibration speed that correlates to the pitch. So as you are short and fat on your cords and the air passes past them, you are gonna get a lower pitch because the vibration characteristics of that position are slow. As you lengthen your cords and they become more taut and tight and thin, as the air passes over them, the vibration characteristics become very quick, which gives you a higher pitch, right? But the, sh the long and the short of it is that's pretty much the entire role that the vocal cords play. Now, they have to be able to do that easily to make voice use feel easy. So bumps, injuries, and things like that will make that vibration irregular. That's what we're going to hear as hoarseness or poor closure or difficulty with like pitchiness is when you position everything right, but something is wrong with that vibrating source and you get pitch problems, right? So... They're not irrelevant, but they're certainly not where you want to put most of your focus, especially in these times. 
And then the final thing we're really going to address today in terms of anatomy is your resonating system. And that is everything from your vocal cords to the outside world. The best way I can think of to describe this is if you imagine any other instrument, and after all, what is the voice but a human instrument? So you take that idea of a vibratory source creating vibrations in the air that then resonate or bounce around within the instrument before coming out to the outside world where the listener can hear it. So if you imagine a guitar, you pluck this, you strum the strings, the vibrations are introduced into the chamber of the guitar, which I'm sure is not the right word for it, but into the guitar part of the guitar. And it adds color to that vibration so that when we hear it, we hear what sounds musical, right? If you stuff that guitar chamber with um, cotton balls, you are going to get a very, very different sound quality because you've taken away that resonance space. And so in humans, the equivalent of that guitar chamber, and now I'm fixed to that word, I don't know what else to call it, um, is everything in your throat, your nose, your sinuses, and your mouth. That is specifically from here to the outside world, right? So the shape of your inside, the, the tissue characteristics, whether you have big tonsils or small, nasal congestion or not, um, a small jaw and a large tongue, or you know, however your anatomy is, that is going to give your voice the color of your voice. Interestingly, I actually had this you know, credit card situation where there was some fraud and I called and they said, yeah, we noticed there was fraud because you didn't sound like you. And I'm like, what does that mean? And really what it comes down to is they're using voice recognition because it is so individual. The inside of our throats and the inside of our resonance system, it is distinguishing enough that they can actually use it technologically, in my case, to save me from some credit card fraud, but um, in yours to provide beautiful music. And so what we want to do these days, again, is really pay heed to the health of our upper respiratory system, our nose and our sinuses. We are plum in allergy season right now. And so that's where you're going to want to be a little bit more aggressive on managing your nasal hygiene, um, managing your allergies. And that's going to be done in partnership with a physician who's an expert in voice, if possible, because that's how you're going to make sure you're finding the best treatment that's the lowest risk to your voice, right? You want effective medical care that still honors the fact that you are are a professional singer. And so that's kind of the apparatus and how it works. And then the only other thing I really wanted to um, leave you guys with today are some of the things that you can do as we are feeling so vocally taxed and tired and strenuous, um, strained these days. So number one is a little bit of self-massage. This is something that must be taken delicately. And if it doesn't feel good, just stop. Those are the disclaimers. You know, this is not for everybody, but most people benefit from a little bit of self massage around your larynx. So I generally have my singers take their fingers in the motion of a C and the gesture of a C and really lightly, you're going to be pressing towards each other along your windpipe. And you can start at the top and I alternate hands Gosh, that feels good. I alternate hands because your thumbs are different, are obviously stronger. So if I keep doing this, I'm gonna really overload on my right side and get nothing on my left. So a really nice massage here does two things. Number one is it actually really does help those tendons and those muscles relax. But number two, again, you're giving your brain the feedback that, hey, this is a part that feels achy and sore. Can you help me let it go? And your brain does do a really good job of that if you help it along. The next thing I really want you to focus on are some of these support muscles. And these are specifically called your scalenes, your SCMs are these big guys that kind of turn your head. Um, they're also muscles that get really engaged with voice use. So doing some really simple head tilt, ear to shoulder, you can assist with your hand. And then as you look up, the stretch is gonna come to the front. As you look down, it's gonna go towards the back. And what you're really doing, again, in a balanced fashion always, is just telling your brain, where do I feel this? What can you do to help me? You know, And the stretch is really instrumental to helping your body relax those areas. Um, even just a little bit of gentle massage, think of it like t one tenth the pressure of kneading dough if anybody is a bread maker. Um, really just, this is a human body, there's really delicate structures in your neck, so less is more here. 
Um, just doing a little bit of a gentle rub here might even be safer than the kneading motion. Just going really along those muscles, you're gonna start to feel a lot of relaxation. The last um, area that I have a lot of, actually two more that I would have you consider is um, creating a little bit of a semi-fist with your hands and leaving your thumbs out and then just resting your chin in your thumbs. It's actually gonna anchor your thumbs here and that's where your tongue attaches to the top of your larynx. So as you're watching Netflix, just kind of leaning into that a minute, 30 seconds. Again, you're just telling your brain that is not a spot where I want you to be tense. Final place, if any of you are um, teeth grinders and jaw clenchers, is again taking these fingers now and just working this masseter muscle. So that's going to look like this. And this can be really, really uncomfortable for people. I know it's really, really achy for me. And you can go down past the angle of your mandible, just kind of working down back here. Um, these are all muscles that really, really over engage as we're using our voice. And a lot of vocal artists will manifest their stress with tension in these muscles. So just, I mean, I'll tell you honestly, I already feel a little bit better vocally just for having done that as a demonstration. If you just give yourself two minutes every third day, you should be able to cover all of this and get some of that really relaxing recovery that hopefully will get you performing and feeling really good in your voice. I hope this helped to some degree. Um, please reach out if I can be of any help. I'm on Instagram at Rena Gupta MD. I obviously have um, a practice and you know you can find me online, um, but reach out. I'm happy to help however I can. Um, it's been a real pleasure being with you guys. Um, sing safely. Take care. Bye.